Welcome to step two of the Story Choreography Project. Today is all about physical storytelling. How do we take the pieces of inspiration and transform them into our bodies and into physical movement? By the end of today, you will have the building blocks to what's going to become your dance based on that conversation or connection in your family or community. I have a dancer friend with me who's going to help me with this, but you can do it on your own or work with someone else in your household to create this dance. The process, it's all up to you. Let's start, choreographer. We're gonna go ahead and start our exploration of physical storytelling, how we take the elements of our story and start to bring them into our bodies. I brought one of my friends here. Her name is JC. She's a dancer with our professional training division, and she's going to help us learn this concept. So we're going to start our exploration of physical storytelling by looking at a couple of emotions. So I'm going to ask JC here to explore some emotions. She's going to start by doing something very literal, a very literal exploration of the emotion, and then we're going to ask her to try something more abstract, more full body. So we're going to ask JC to start with the word happy or joyous, happy or joyous. She has a full body experience. Notice that her toes go up, her shoulders are going up, her whole face lightens. It's a head, shoulders, knees, and toes experience of this emotion. Good job. So now we're gonna ask her to try a more abstract version of the same emotion, happy or joyous, but I'm gonna ask her to try to use all four limbs. I want her all four limbs to be a part of it. So happy and joyous. Still up, lifting, awesome, great. Now your happy and joyous might be totally different than JC's and that is a-okay. In fact, it's encouraged. So the next thing we're going to look at, the next emotion is sad or depressed. Again, she's gonna start with a literal interpretation, almost like an actor would. Her head goes down, her shoulders go down. It's still a full body experience. You notice her stomach even caves in. Wonderful. And now we're going to ask for that full body abstract interpretation of the word sad or depressed. Great, we're gonna ask her to stay in this pose because I want you to start to think about other words that come to your mind by watching this dancer's pose. What is the story of her body right now? What are other words? For me, the word lonely comes to mind. So now using her body, we're gonna ask her to try some objects out. How can she become an object using only her body. So I'm gonna ask her to start by becoming a tree, becoming a tree using her body. Great, awesome. What kind of tree do you think she might be? We're now going to try some of those elements as we talk about elements. We're gonna start by asking her to think about the word Fire. How can you create a picture of fire using your body? Awesome. So opposite of fire would be water. How do you use water using your body? Excellent. So let's try air or wind. Air, wind. Awesome, and then let's look at earth. What is earth? How can you interpret earth? We're going to start by doing just what we did. Pick out three sections from your vision board and create three different poses from those inspirations. We're going to start by looking at my grandmother's story. And JC and I are going to take pieces of my vision board and transform them into physical pictures or poses like we just did. Now here's the thing about the creative process. You're an artist 
and not everything is going to work the first time. As you watch JC and I work, you'll watch us try all kinds of new things and experiment. So don't be afraid to fail because it's not a failure. It's a part of the process. And to me, that's the fun part. The first pose you pick may not be the one you end up with, and that's okay. So let's get dancing. So the first part of my grandmother's story that really spoke to me kind of came up at the end when she talked about how lonely she is right now, how she's trapped in her room, and kind of contrasting that with how she used to live her life. She's really busy and open and, and did a lot. So I want to kind of explore that, um, that isolation and that loneliness. So what's the first thing when you, when, I think, when you think about isolation and lonely, especially from someone who's used to being go, 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 busy, 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 what, what might be the first pose you might try? I like that. Maybe we could try something on the ground, maybe something that really shows a different dimension of space. Oh yeah, I really like that. Cool, yeah, so let's, let's use that as our first one. So this is gonna be my first physical picture. Now, this is not in any linear order, right? So I'm choosing something from the end of my grandmother's story. So the next piece on my vision board is Music Hall. Um, she used to live across the street from Music Hall and at the end of a long work day, she and her family would sit out on the porch and just look at it. She said there wasn't a lot going on, but she would look at the architecture and then just like watch the people going up and down the street. So um, I'm really interested in that architecture. So how can we, how can we do that? Oh, cool. So what I love about this is she's got, you got the, the detail in your hand, which reminds me of some of the curves um, in, that, in that architecture, some of that detail. So it's like tall and lifting, but then there's like those curves in the hand. Cool. Can I see it again? Great. The last piece of my vision board kind of represents what she was working towards. And she talked a lot about, she worked in a factory, she worked in multiple factories, and she was very busy and she was working towards her goals. So she graduated college very young. She graduated high school at 16. So she had a lot of goals. She was super goal oriented. But there's also this sense of like freedom and like running towards your goals. Um, does that inspire anything in you physically? Okay, let's see. Running. Amazing, love it. Can we, so she's young, young teenager. Like how can we maybe incorporate some of that busyness and youngness in the, in the, oh good. So you twisted your body a little bit. So this is my third pose. This is the end. This is how my dance is kind of gonna end on that third picture. We can't wait to see what you create. Join us next week on May 6th with Jennifer Ultrabald to discuss your progress and ask any questions you might have about choreography or physical storytelling. See you next week.